The Greeks brought us many marvels of civilization, art, architecture, and philosophy. But they also established firmly one of the worst pieces of Western civilization and common knowledge, slavery. On this fine day, we will learn about the history of Greek slaves. We've all seen the monuments, the sculptures, and the art. We as a society still have many of the philosophies developed by these Greeks. But how did the Greeks do it? What gave them the time and the energy to develop these brilliant pillars of civilization? The answer is simple. Slavery. Greek slaves were generally people taken from Kethera, Chios, Lemnos, and Halicarnassus. The Greeks were not picky about their slaves. Anyone they conquered would do. Along with prisoners of war, piracy and slave trade with other countries allowed Greece to have almost an unlimited supply of slaves. It's likely that most slaves in ancient Greece were house slaves and or workshop slaves. These slaves did the mundane repetitive tasks that the Greeks didn't want to do. In Athens especially, these city slaves could be treated relatively well, minus their legal and social status. Other parts of Greece were less so. However, in Athens, slaves had a certain level of respect. In Athens, some slaves dressed better than normal people. They were considered almost citizens. A slave could own a business, and they were even invited to dinner on their first day to dine with their master. There was one incident where the slave of an Athenian man actually was inherited his master's business when his master died. Um, he was more like an, of an educated one. Uh, in general, though, the slaves stayed right where they were when they were born, which would be at the bottom of the social ladder. And that's because the Greeks generally thought very low of the slaves. They thought they were like you know, half humans, almost. Exactly, half humans, not almost at all. They were half humans. Even Aristotle viewed slaves harshly. He, along with most of nearly all of Greece, believed that slaves are missing the deliberate half of their mind. He said, When slavery comes down on a man's shoulders, he loses half of his wit. Indeed, most slaves were in much worse conditions. Agricultural slaves were subject to the whims of their owners and were seldom emancipated. But possibly the worst off were the mining slaves. Conscripted by rich Greeks, they were put into mines to look for precious minerals. Their lives were hard and short. These Greek slaves provided the backbone of the economy for all of Greece. They freed up the time for the free Greeks so that they could focus on the things like liberal arts and philosophy, stuff that would advance their culture over the years. It's safe to say that without these slaves providing the backbone of Greece's economy, Greece would have never been able to develop such a wonderful culture. For all of Greece's advancements, the slaves stayed almost exactly in the same spot throughout these ages. Moses Finley, a great scholar, said that one aspect of Greek's history is the advance hand in hand of freedom and slavery, which is, I think, a very, very accurate truth. The problem is that it took a very long time for us to move past that idea. Our own American slavery, so recently abolished, holds much in common with that of the ancient Greeks. The belief that the freed are above the slaves. The way we treat them. Consider them property. We'd like to remember just the great works and achievements of the Greeks. But never forget the darkness of Greek slavery.